Hello, everyone, and welcome to a special edition of The Patch Report. I'm Dustin Childs, Head of Threat Awareness here at Trend Micro's Zero Day Initiative. And today we are talking about an exploit that we have found in the wild. And to talk about that, I have a special guest that is Peter Gerdes. He is a senior threat researcher with the ZDI. Peter, how are we doing today? Good. Thanks for having me on, Dustin. Great. So uh, you were the one who actually found this in the wild. Let's talk about CVE 2024-21412. And uh, what is that vulnerability? So it's a Windows Defender Smart Screen Security Bypass. Uh, so Microsoft Windows Defender Smart Screen doesn't properly apply uh, Mark of the Web when using shortcut files, uh, which essentially leads to a bypass of the smart screen protections. Okay, and a lot of people aren't really familiar with Mark of the Web, and it, it does sound a bit sinister. Can you explain what Mark of the Web is? So Mark of the Web is a security feature that helps us when we download content from the internet. Uh, since there's a lot of malicious content from the internet, we want to make sure that we don't inadvertently click on something malicious. So it's a, it's a feature that Microsoft has in place that if you download something from an untrusted source, it would get a mark of the web designation, which would force you to make a conscious decision on executing this file. It, we've all been aware of the, the, the pop-ups, hey, would you like to execute this file? That's mark of the web. Okay. Yeah. So when I go visit a website and I see a document that I want to look at, I click it and something pops up and says, Hey, this is from the internet. Are you really sure? And this bug evades that, correct? Correct. Okay. So when did you first detect this in the wild? So I first detected this in the wild back in December uh, 30th. Okay. Uh, so we were tracking another uh, security bypass vulnerability, uh, CVE 36025, uh, which a lot of threat actors have been using in their chains, uh, which led mm -hmm. to this discovery. Okay, so you detected it in late December, and of course we notified Microsoft immediately. But Trend Micro actually was able to roll out protections to our customers uh, mid-January, is that right? That's correct. So immediately when Microsoft confirmed this behavior, then we ensured that our customers were protected. Okay, I think that's awesome that we were able to protect our customers ahead of time. Let's take a look at the actual exploit itself. You got us a, a, a video here. So walk us through this video of the exploit. So clicking on this, this is actually a landing page that opens Windows Explorer. And if we pause right here, mm -hmm. So this is actually Windows Explorer. So you just asked, hey, you're opening Windows Explorer. So this is a specially crafted window of Windows Explorer because we noticed the downloads at the top. Okay. So we are actually abusing yeah. the Microsoft search protocol. So we've crafted the downloads at the top there, and then we've added a search string on the actual uh, file itself to make it seem like this is actually already locally available to us. Uh, so to the average user, when they think that this is actually local, they're like, oh, I'm op opening a local file. But we can tell based on, on right underneath the, the name of this file that it's actually a web yeah. dev share. Yeah, you see the the uh, IP address right there. Yeah, exactly. Okay, that's interesting. So we're tricking the user into thinking that they've already got this on their system. Really, they're connecting to the bad guy system and then getting some code execution. Exactly. So it's going to take a second here there, and then it popped up notepad. Okay. So under normal circumstances, yeah. we should see a, hey, would you like to execute this script? Okay. And of course, we're just popping up Notepad and this, because it's just a proof of concept. We're not actually writing malware ourselves. Yes. So this is going to demonstrate our expected behavior. Okay. Yeah. And that's what we want to see happen. When we click on something with the mark of the web, we want... Uh, a prompt from Windows to say, hey, this is this is a bad file. Yeah, in, in this case, it says, don't run. Yeah, but in that case, when you click on the vulnerable one, you just get code execution. Exactly. And the threat actors were clever in this is they in their attack chain, the final piece of the chain is actually a real JPEG file. So the user just thinks okay. that it's taking a long time to open. Wow. So you actually do get the file that they kind of promise you, which is, you yes. know, how to make money without really trying, that sort of thing. So Water Hydra is exploiting this and they're targeting Forex traders. Is that correct? Yeah, it started off with Forex traders, now it infiltrated into other communities ar around finances. So there's this is their kind of motivation is financial gain. So they're invested in crypto traders and stock traders, et cetera. And there's a second campaign that's using this by emailing out uh, crafted PDF files. Is that correct? 
Exactly. So while we were doing this investigation, additional threat actors got involved with the exploitation of the zero day. And the operators behind Darkgate got involved, and they're using traditional phishing mechanisms, uh, such as malicious PDFs. Okay, well, that's great. Peter, I really thank you for your time and that quick overview of the CVE. And uh, hey, if you find any more, definitely let us know. We have, we'll have you back on. Thanks so much, Justin. So that is it. That is our quick look at it. Be sure to stay tuned for our full uh, patch report for the entire release. And until then, uh, if you have any questions about this bug, compose a comment, leave it in there, and we'll try to answer your questions as they come in. Until then, I'm Dustin Child signing off for the ZDI. Stay safe. <laughs>